Task Sequence Debugger. So name explains itself. So it is a feature of Configuration Manager which you can use to debug a task sequence. This is exactly what we are going to look at in this video. So this is a second part of operating system troubleshooting and I have already made another video in which we looked at the logs. So what logs are important and how we should look at these logs. Um, and I'll leave that link for you in the description of this video. You can check it out if you have not checked out yet. And um, let's get started. Hello everyone, this is Jay Singh. Welcome to my channel, Tech Tech Solutions. Okay, so before we move forward, I would like to take a moment about uh, what the world is going through currently. And we all know about the situation of coronavirus, COVID-19. And uh, I would like to leave a message for you to stay safe, take care of yourself and your loved ones. Okay, so let's move forward uh, with this video. I'm going to break down this video into three parts. In the first part, we are going to look at uh, what are the prerequisites for uh, task sequence debugger option. And um, in the second part of this video, we are going to look at how to enable this feature. And in the last part, which is the most interesting part of this video, we will see task sequence debugger in action and uh, we will discuss about what are the options available within task sequence debugger. Okay, so the very first prerequisite is um, Configuration Manager version. So it has to be 1906 or above. And uh, if you are running below that, make sure you just update it. And the second is uh, your boot images, they should be up to date. So you can update your ADK if it's um, not the version that I'm gonna look at now. And if it's not that, you can always update that and you will receive up-to-date boot images as well. So let's have a look at how you can check what configuration manager version you're running and what ADK is installed and uh, what version boot images are installed. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So to check the configuration manager version, so you change it over to administration and then click on updates and services. And you can see that what version is installed in your case. So in my case, you can see that it is 1910. Okay. Uh, however, in your case, if it is below 1906, you can click on check for updates and then make sure you right click and uh, do the prerequisite check first before you install update. Okay, so second thing we're gonna check out is ADK. In my case, um, I have updated my ADK and my ADK is version number 10118362, which is Windows um, 1903, all right? And I'll minimize that. And now let's check what version of boot image I am using currently. So I will click on um, software library, then we will change it over to operating systems, and then we will click on boot images. So you can see that here, the boot image, which I'm currently using is 1903, okay? So that has been installed on this server. So to check out more about ADK and uh, Windows 10, I will leave the links for you in the description. Let's minimize that. I'll show you these two links. So uh, this is Windows 10 release information link from where you get all the information about Windows 10 releases. We will have a look at version 1903. Let's have a look at that. So you can see that it is 18.362. That's Windows 10 1903. And support for Windows 10 ADK. Here we can see that Windows 10 ADK, Configuration Manager 1906 and it supports 1903 and 1809 is backward compatible however i will recommend that you should update your adk to 1903 so that you will receive update to the boot images because the latest boot images they have the configuration and support for the client for task sequence debugger okay so this is all for the prerequisites now let's uh, move on to the second part of this video in that part, we are going to look at how to enable task sequence debugger feature. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so before we enable this feature from uh, administration, so what we have to do is make sure you have pre-release consent provided. Um, so to do that, we will actually click on the site configuration, extend that, and we will select our site. And uh, in the home screen here, in hierarchy settings, click on that and new window will open 
and consent to use pre-release features. In my case, I have ticked it. This is a one way. And once you tick it, you cannot undo that. Okay, so that's consent is provided and this is ticked. Once you do that, click on apply and then click on OK. In my case, it's already done. So I will just click on cancel. And once the consent is provided and then we will go back to updates and servicing, extend that and click on features. You will see that all these features are available here and some of the features are pre-release features. So task sequence debugger feature is also a pre-release feature. So once you enable that, you cannot actually turn it off. So you right click and you just turn it on from here. So basically in most cases, it will turn on straight away. However, in some cases it can take up to 30 minutes. Okay, so once the task sequence debugger feature is turned on and enabled, uh, you should be able to use this feature. So we will have a look at it, how to use this feature. So this is the third part of this video. And uh, now we're gonna check out how we can actually use this feature and what are the things we should keep in mind. And also what are the features uh, further options we have in task sequence debugger feature. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so to have a look at that feature, we will go to software library and we will go to uh, one of our task sequence. To do that, uh, extend operating systems and uh, click on task sequences. So go to any task sequence that you want to use as a debugger. So I'm going to use this task sequence here. So when I select this task sequence at the top, you can see that debug option is there. Okay, so I can deploy it as a debug task sequence. All right, few things that we have to keep in our mind. Make sure you do not deploy same task sequence to same collection as normal task sequence and debug task sequence. So in that case, it might not, debugging might not work. Okay, so just make sure uh, you have that option. To make things simple, so what I have done, I have created a new collection, device collection, and I have named it task sequence debugging collection, and I have added one client to that, and I'm going to deploy this to that collection. So that collection, I'll have a look at that. If I go to assets and compliance, device collections, and in here, I will extend that in testing. I have task sequence debugging, TS debugging, and there's one member. So this is PC-01, okay? So we'll go back to our task sequence that we would like to deploy as a debug task sequence. This is here. And if I look at the deployments, this is already deployed to some other collections. However, this time around, we are going to deploy it as a debug task sequence, okay? So we will click on debug here, or you can right click, deploy it as debug. And you will see a normal window, which you usually see when you deploy a normal task sequence. So we will browse to our collection and um, it's a device collection, testing, TS, debugging. So I will click OK on that. And I don't want to pre-download content. I'm pretty happy with that. I will click next. So I want to deploy it as configuration manager client, media and PXA. And we'll click on next and um, I don't want to schedule it. Uh, it will be available straight away. So user experience, um, software installation, they can see that. System restart, if this, um, if it required, it will happen and allow this task sequence to run for clients on the internet. In my test environment, this is um, not a valid option. I don't have to tick it. I will click on next in alerts. I'm not going to configure anything. Click next, that's distribution point settings. Download content locally when needed. I'm happy with that. Allow clients to use distribution points from the neighbor boundary group if you have any. So this second option is here. Allow clients to use uh, distribution points when um, their current distribution is not available and it will use that site default boundary group. So I'll click on next and these are the options. I'm quite happy with that. I will click on next and this is deployed, all right? So if you look at deployments, you can see that task sequence debugging is deployed, all right? So this is deployed to PC-01, and we will start PC-01, and we will see how this will work out. Okay, so PC-01, I will make sure that settings, firmware, network adapter is at the top, so it will do PXE boot. I will double click on that. I will bring it to the center and uh, let's just start it. 
and when prompted I'm gonna hit enter here you go it's downloading tek 0005.vim this is a boot file it's downloading okay so we will provide the password and it is going to display the task sequence which is deployed to PC-01 okay so this is win 10 ent x64 debug you can see clearly it says that it's a debug task sequence all right so I'm gonna click next on to it and um, OST computer name this is a known machine so I don't have to change it I'm gonna click next and uh, we will see that task sequence debugger window is there okay so now we will have a look at the different options available. All right, I'm gonna move this one to side here. So uh, before we talk about the top, we will talk about current here. You can see that these two errors, these two errors, it tells us where the current position of the task sequence. So it's on check readiness. So you can actually change the current position to something else, okay? However, um, check readiness has already been done anyways. So if we click on step, so it will run the current step and then stop on the next one, okay? And if you pick set current, you can click on any step and you can set any step as current step, all right? And if you click on set break, it will actually add breaks. So it will stop on that break wherever you set the break. So clear all breaks, simple, it will clear any break. So with the breaks, in Configuration Manager 1906, when you set breaks and your um, computer restarts during operating system deployment, and it might clear all the breaks. However, once you set breaks in uh, 1910, it will remember all the breaks within that task sequence debugger window. All right, and log file, if we click on that, you can see SMSTS log file, which is very important, the most important log file of operating system deployment. We can close that, you can open command prompt as well, and if you type cmtrace, it will actually load cmtrace window as well. So I'm gonna close that, close that, and you can cancel and quit as well. So let's start with step. So I'm gonna use step, so it's gonna run first step, and then it's gonna stop on the next one. So click on step, see how it actually uh, ran through first one and then it stopped on the next available step which was install operating system. And before we move forward, I'm gonna add a few breaks. So I'm gonna add a break here and I'm gonna add a break here and maybe I will add one break here. I don't want to set current, um, set break and let's um, set current. That's the one which is current. And um, here, if I run, it will stop before running this step, okay? So let's just run that now. There you go, so it actually stopped before it started partitioning for BIOS. However, this machine, this virtual machine is UEFI. It's not gonna do anything here. So I'm gonna run and it's gonna stop before it ran the next step, which is partition disk zero UEFI, okay? Um, so it hasn't partitioned any disk yet. So I will run that. And now it will partition disk and apply Windows settings, apply OS, apply Windows settings, apply network settings, apply device drivers. It will stop here before it ran setup windows and configuration manager. And also while it's running, we can click on log file. We can uh, view the log file, what is happening in the background. We can close that as well. Okay, so it has completed a setup operating system step and now it has stopped where the break was. So if we run it and then it will continue for the rest of the task sequence, it will run the rest. However, we can always go back and we can set this one current and we can start from scratch here. Okay, um, and I'll go back here, I'll set this one current and I'll let it run and this will finish it off things. However, if there are any errors, you will see errors and it will tell you that um, the errors are there and the operating system um, task sequence deployment, it will not finish here if there's any error, which means you can always go back 
and change certain things and then you can start it again all right so i will click on run again and i'll let it run thanks for watching this video and if you feel like this video is informative make sure you give it a thumbs up and show your support by subscribing to my channel and click on the bell icon as well to get all the latest notifications from this channel also i have written a blog as well regarding this you can check out my blog at blog.technex.com.au. I will see you in the next video.